Welcome to this Learn the Electrics video, the 10th in our 18th edition exam help series. We hope that this video will help you in your studies or just simply keep your knowledge up to date. This video will look at how part 4 of the wiring regulations works and in particular at chapter 41. If you don't already have a copy of the 18th edition, I urge you to obtain one. It makes it so much easier to follow these help videos. Part 4 is a big section of the regulations. Expect 15 questions on part 4. To put it into context, 15 questions is 25% of the exam. We can begin at the most important page of the wiring regulations, page 3, the main contents page. We will find part 4 shown here along with the titles of each chapter and the page numbers where they are located. There are just five chapters as chapter 45 no longer exists and these chapter titles are going to be your clues to finding the exam question answers very quickly. When looking at the chapters, think what the title is telling you. Chapter 41 is all about disconnection times and protecting a person from getting an electric shock. Chapter 42 is about thermal effects. If the question asks in case of fire, then this might be a good place to start your search. And the next three chapters are just as descriptive in what information they hold. Part 4 has its own contents page and we will find that each chapter also has its own contents page. And you really must become familiar with using these pages they will save you a lot of searching and a lot of time. How do contents pages work? If a question began for protection against electric shock, additional protection is? Well, our first clue is the words protection against electric shock. And on page 3, we find that this is chapter 41 and then we are directed to page 55. The second clue is found on page 55. Scanning down the chapter contents page, we find an entry for additional protection. And this tells us the answer that we seek might be in regulation 415. It is now an easy matter to find the answer in the half a page that makes up regulation 415. The next question might ask about the risk of fire and stored materials. Risk of fire is our first clue. On page 3, we can find chapter 42 thermal effects and that sounds like fire to me. Now we are directed to page 79. On page 79 there is another content section and scanning down we can find our second clue locations with risks of fire due to the nature of processed or stored materials. It tells us quite directly to go to regulation 422.3. How easy is that if you just follow the contents pages. For the rest of the video we will concentrate just on chapter 41. The importance of chapter 41 cannot be overstated. You will have lots of exam questions on this chapter and it is so very important in your working life too. This chapter is about protection against electric shock. How do we prevent people and animals from getting an electric shock? Don't forget my usual advice, exam setters love lists. Regulation 410.3.3 is an example. It is a list of protective measures that are discussed later in the chapter. You do not need to understand what each part is actually regulating to answer the question. Just find the list and word match against the question. The next section is about automatic disconnection of supply, often abbreviated to ADS. This is a key area to focus on. All we want to know is, will the fuse blow or the breaker trip if there is a problem? Section 411, beginning on page 57, is about basic protection and fault protection. Basic protection is all about insulating life parts or putting them behind barriers and enclosures. Fault protection is to do with earthing, bonding and making ADS work. And you must know the difference between basic and fault protection. Expect questions. A very important regulation is 411.3.2. And this is the key regulation 
on which a lot of chapter 41 depends. 411.3.2.2 tells us that certain maximum disconnection times can be found in table 41.1 on the next page and that the table applies to final circuits only with a rating not exceeding 63 amps for circuits with a socket or 32 amps for circuits supplying only fixed electrical equipment. You absolutely must remember where to find this regulation. Understanding table 41.1 is also very important. You will be asked questions on it, guaranteed. The voltage ranges need careful consideration. A domestic household will have a nominal voltage of 230 volts. This is what we call it. This 230 volts is what we base our calculations on, even if the actual voltage is 240 volts. And the letters TN mean that this row of data applies to both TNS systems and to TNCS systems. Looking at the voltage columns, we've highlighted the range 120 volts to 230 volts. And this is where to look for most domestic installations. The writing in the red box tells us the nominal voltage is over 120 volts and up to and including 230 volts. A typical exam question might ask, what is the maximum disconnection time for a 32 amp cooker circuit installed in a domestic dwelling with a TNCS earthing system? Because the question says domestic, we assume that this is a 230 volt AC final circuit. Find the column 120 volts to 230 volts at the top. Find AC. We know it is TNCS, so find the row TN, and where the two cross is our answer. 230 volts, TN, an AC system, and our maximum disconnection time should not exceed 0 0.4 seconds. But what do we do if the circuit is not a final circuit? Or it is more than 63 amps with sockets? Or more than 32 amps supplying only fixed equipment? Look at just a few lines below table 41.1. Here you will find regulations 411.3.2.3 and 411.3.2.4. They tell us the maximum disconnection times for distribution circuits are those circuits that don't meet the criteria for table 41.1. On the next few pages are three tables that you absolutely must know. These are the ZS tables and you will be asked questions on these in the exam. Begin by looking at table 41.2 on page 61. Look at the title. Don't assume you know what it says. Look at it. It tells us that this table is for fuses but only for circuits with a 0 0.4 second disconnection time. In other words, final circuits. On the next page is table 41.3. This is for circuit breakers and RCBOs and it applies to both 0 0.4 second and 5 second disconnection times. So this table is for both final circuits and distribution circuits. And on page 63 is table 41.4. Look at the title. This is for fuses with a disconnection time of 5 seconds. So it is for distribution circuits. Stay with this table on page 63. There are some sneaky little traps to mislead you. At the top of the page are listings for BS88-2 fuses. And further down the table are the listings for BS88-3 fuses. Make sure that you're in the correct section as asked by the question. They will have different values for ZS. And exam question setters know this and they will deliberately put in answers from the wrong tables. If a question asked, what is the maximum permitted ZS for a 32 amp BS88-3 fuse with the required disconnection time of 0 0.4 seconds? The information in the question guides us to table 41.2. Find BS88-3 fuses, find 32 amps, and just below 32 is the answer we seek. ZS should not exceed 0 0.91 ohms. Easy if you follow the method. A brief mention of TT systems. 
These will be found on pages 63 and 64. A table, 41.5, often comes up as an exam question. This table is to be used to determine the maximum ZS for a TT system with RCD protection. It applies to TT systems only and it is not to be used as a get out of jail card for high readings in TNS or TNCS systems. You need to be professional and fix the problem. Especially note the little red box at the bottom right. Another exam question. Readings above 200 ohms may be unstable. There is a table too for reduced low voltage systems. This is found on page 68. But what is a reduced low voltage system? A typical example is a big yellow 110 volt transformer that is found on many building sites. The secondary or output windings are center tapped to earth, abbreviated to CTE. This means that the secondary voltage is 55055 volts. The maximum voltage to earth therefore is 55 volts. It's not quite extra low voltage but it is a reduced low voltage and that's an important difference to remember. The disconnection time is now five seconds and this table works for single phase or three phase. We can show you the table in action with a typical exam question. If the question is that a 55 volt reduced low voltage system is protected by a 16 amp BSEN60898 MCB type D, what is the maximum permitted ZS for this arrangement? The question actually leads you through the table to the correct answer. The hardest part is finding the table, so remember where it is. Page 3, Contents, tells us protection against electric shock, page 55. Scan down page 55, chapter 41, Contents page, and 13 lines down we find 411.8 reduced low voltage systems. It couldn't be easier to find. So follow the question. 16 amps for the breaker size. 55 volts type D and the blue circle shows 0 0.33 ohms and there is the answer. A few other regulations to look at. On page 74 there are three regulations that you should understand for your own on-site work and guess what? They also appear as 18th edition exam questions. Regulation 415.2.2 .2 states that the maximum resistance between simultaneously accessible extraneous and exposed parts should not exceed the numbers that are calculated with these two equations. In other words, if you can touch the radiator and the metal ceiling light at the same time, the resistance path between them should be less than these calculations. We have given an example in the box. In amps, a 30 milliamp RCD is the same as 0 0.030. So, 50 volts touch voltage divided by 0 0.030 amps tells us the maximum resistance path should not exceed 1667 ohms. Compare this to table 41.5 on page 64 and can you see a similarity? Staying on page 74, two regulations to take note of and possible exam questions. 416.2.1 says that all surfaces on a barrier or enclosure shall be protected to at least IPXXB or IP2X. In other words, fingerproof. 416.2.2 .2 adds to this by telling us that horizontal top surfaces must be IPXXD or IP4X. This is sewing needle proof. Why the top surface? Well, what do people use the top of the sockets or consumer units for? A shelf. They make perfect shelves for small items. Let's look at the question. The resistance R between simultaneously accessible exposed conductive parts and extraneous conductive parts shall fulfill which one of the following conditions? There will only be one answer that fits the question. Here, 
We just need to look at the equations in the regs book and carefully compare them with the possible answer choices. Only one will exactly match. And we find the answer to be choice D. This is the only exact match. So easy, but read carefully. Double check, treble check if you need to. And that is chapter 41. Read it, spend time looking at it. There will be lots of questions on chapter 41. We can look at some questions now. We can begin, as always, with the answers to last week's 18th edition exam help, session number nine, Earthing Systems and Assessment of Characteristics. Here are the answers. They should have been easy to find. Just make sure that you read the question and remember that for many questions, you are just word matching sentences or phrases. There will only be one answer that is the most appropriate, so please read carefully. And now, on to questions for this session, chapter 41. Which of the following is not listed in the regulations as a protective measure that is generally permitted? There will be a list for this. The question uses the word generally. And there is an entry in the contents on page 55 that says general requirements. Will this tell you which regulation to go to? And also remember that this is a not question. Question two is about TT systems, distribution circuits and disconnection times. Look in the writing below table 41.1. Next, a regular question about luminaires in houses. And I'll give you a clue. Look on page 59. Question four is a question on fuses and where are you going to find tables on maximum ZS values for fuses? Question 5. Look at the clues in the question. Scan down page 55 and here you will find an entry TT system and a regulation number to go to. A question on reduced low voltage systems next. Page 55 tells you which regulation to go to. It's then just a case of using the table to find the answer. Question seven. Look at what the question is telling you. It's asking when making provisions for basic protection. Is there an entry on page 55 for this? Yes, there is. And it will tell you where to look for the answer. And finally, question eight. We deliberately haven't covered this. Can you find placing out of reach? Well, there we are. We hope that you found this video from Learn Electrics both useful and enjoyable and that you are adding to your electrical knowledge. Please click on subscribe below. It will give you access to all of our Tech Tips videos and you will also ensure that you don't miss our next video. By clicking on subscribe, you help us too and we do appreciate that small act. Also, tapping in Learn Electrics or one word into the YouTube search bar will give you access to all the videos. Thank you for watching and we hope to see you again very soon.